Hey guys, look back here and welcome to another FIFA 20 SBC analysis video and today guys, the second full birthday squad has been released. I'm a little bit disappointed because I was hoping for Luis Suarez. He didn't come. He didn't come. We did get Paul Pogba. We did get Gareth Bale. Uh, Van Dijk at a centre-back is pretty interesting. Di Maria, Lacazette, Douglas Costa, Hernandez... Uh, Lamarga in there, Da Costa as well, who had an amazing team in the season card last year, and a couple others as well from the Syria and from the Bundesliga. So maybe he might get a player moment to SBC later on in the week, Luis Suarez, but we'll have to wait and see. But for today, in terms of SBCs, we have been given the Maling Saar SBC. Not the guy that plays for Watford, the guy that plays for Nice instead as a centre back. He has been given a five star skill moves permanent upgrade. We'll have a look at this card. We'll compare him with other cards as well to see if he's kind of value for money, what the SBC requirements are for him, what packs you get in return. We'll have a look at the stats as well. And then also have a quick look at the season's objectives to see if we've got anything from there as well uh, in terms of cards to be able to grind. Uh, did we get any other SBCs as well? Foot 14. Um, I'll just do that offline. It's only for a 25k pack that's untradeable, so I won't really do that for this video. But anyway, let's have a look at this Marling Star card. So on the base of it, he looks fantastic. 87 rated card, good nation. Good, yeah, good league, I suppose. Um, and then in terms of what you need to do him, 85 rated squad and another 85 rated squad. The packs you get in return are a prime mixed players pack and a prime electrum players pack. Both of those packs are tradable, which is pretty nice. And you have, how long do you have to do him? Five days to do this SBC, which isn't too bad. So 285 rated squads with no special cards. That's going to be around about 150,000 coins, maybe slightly less. And um, I think there was kind of high chemistry requirements. Yeah, 80 and 75. So like putting in cards like um, Onana from Ajax might not be the easiest thing to be able to do because um, he's an 85 rated card. But um, on the whole, not too bad for this 87 rated card. But in terms of stats for this guy, six foot in height isn't the best. But it's not the end of the world, though. You know, I've used short center backs this year and they've still been very, very effective. For example, uh, the new prime, uh, prime icon moments, Carlos Puel, that I did unlock is fantastic. And I think he's only like five foot ten or something. So a uh, six foot is isn't the end of the world. Very nice work. He's at a low high. Five star skills, four star weak foot is uh, always a nice added bonus for a centre back as well. Getting into his in game stats. That's a nice card. That's a nice card. Uh, great pace for a centre back. Happy days there. Shooting stats don't matter. Passing, very, very impressive. He's going to be able to, once he makes those tackles or he uses his strength to get possession back, he's got those good passing stats to be able to get the ball out of danger. Get it towards your midfield, start off attacks. That 88 short pass and that 82 long passing is very, very nice. And also that 75 vision is pretty cool as well. Dribbling stats are very nice as well. 94 composure and 88 reactions on the centre back. Happy days there. Really good agility and balance as well. So he's actually going to feel... Um, Pretty smooth for a centre-back, which is always, again, a very nice added uh, bonus to him. Defensive stats are not the most outrageous defensive stats, but they're solid. And, you know, put a Sentinel on them, and those stats are going to go into the mid-90s, and some of them will go up to 99 as well there. So that's going to be fine. You know, 86 interceptions, 82 heading, 83 defensive awareness. Those stats are okay, but they're not, like, meta stats for this stage of FIFA. So I think looking at this cards... Put a council to increase his defensive stats on because whilst they're good, they're not messy for this stage of FIFA, at least in my opinion, not. So try and get someone to increase those and maybe get that vision up as well from 75. Maybe, you know, try and get that into the low 80s or something. His dribbling, his pace is fine and his physicality is also fine. 93 jumping, 94 strength, amazing stamina as well. So he's not going to get that tired and okay aggression at 81 as well. And there aren't any traits to this card. But on the whole, if this guy's about 150k, which I think he'll be going for. That's a decent price. I don't know what other league on centre backs there are. I did actually pick a few of them out um, before this video. There's only really a few from PSG, to be quite honest. There is the card that you can unlock. There's two that you can unlock from um, the milestones, but you know they're not from the greatest nations, um, and they do both play for Toulouse. But obviously, on the whole, they're not really easy, to, you know, easy to link in with. I'd already say, um, you know, that Saar would be an upgrade to those two cards from Toulouse. You have got Marquinhos' road to the final card. This card goes for around about two hundred thousand coins on the market. I believe he's a similar height. He is the exact same height at six foot. Um, nice work rate again at a medium high. Lacks in both the skill moves and the weak foot, but that isn't the end of the world for a centre-back. In terms of his in-game stats, he is not going to be that good because of his lack in stamina. He's only got 78 stamina. He lacks in strength as well. Don't get me wrong, his defensive stats are much better than Sars. He's got, also got really good composure and reactions and very nice passing stats and decent pace as well. But in my opinion, Saar is a much more better value for money than this Marquinhos card too. We obviously now know uh, won't be getting any more upgrades because... Um, 
the Champions League. I just can't see restarting between now and uh, and whenever football resumes. So uh, I think he would be on a great to hit. Now, the two of the cards I did pick out, there's, uh, there's this gay card from um, Shapeshifters, who obviously position change from a CDM to a centre-back. Now, he's five foot nine in height. That might be too small for a centre-back, actually. I'm not too sure. But again, nice work rate. Three-star, three star's fine. His in-game stats, though, are very impressive. He lacks in that strength a lot. But he's got really good stamina, nice aggression, amazing defensive stats all around. Although, I think that uh, heading accuracy does definitely need to be increased. Um, his dribbling stats are really nice for a centre-back. His passing stats are very nice as well. He's actually a really good card that only goes for around about 40,000 coins. Yes, obviously, he isn't from the greatest nation, but he is from PSG, though, as well. So, you can link him in with cards, um, you know, like Thiago Silva. You can link him with Kalo Navas, you know, in the goalkeeping position, stuff like that as well. He actually is a pretty good card. Um, but let's say, for example, would it be right having Gay and Saar both in the same team? Probably not. I think that um, you need to have, you can't have two you know, short centre-backs in the team. You know, it's fine having one tall one, like I've got a tall one here in Boateng, who's like um, six foot four, and then I've got like a shorter one in, in Puel, who's five foot ten. That kind of works out. But if you're having two short centre-backs together, like if you've had Saar and Gay together, that probably wouldn't be the best because on the whole, they're just two short between them, if that kind of makes sense. But Gay's a decent card, but Saar, I think I'd probably rather have in my team than this Gay card. There is obviously the camera as well from uh, Future Stars. I want to check his price. I'm not too sure actually what he goes for. He has got an inform as a midfielder, actually, but he's got this uh, Future Stars card that goes for around about 150,000 coins. Which is obviously very, very good. I want to have a look at his stats actually as well. Uh, five foot ten as well. What is it? All the centre backs from League One seem to be very, very small. He's a medium, medium work rate, which isn't the best for a centre back. Um, great pace, amazing passing stats, nice dribbling as well. Very nice dribbling actually. Really good defensive stats and great physical. You know what? He probably is on a similar level to Marling Saar. I'd say, you know, if you've already got Cameron in your team and you're thinking, you know, should I maybe have Saar over Cameron in my team? I don't think there's enough to justify that. I think these two compared together in the same team. So if you got, you know, Cameron and Saar together, I think that'd be a great combination. I think between the two of them, though, you know, Cameron is obviously a tradable card. He's kind of on like a level par with Saar, really. Very, very similar stats over round. Very similar heights. Yes, Saar has got the better um, work rate. But on the whole, yeah, Cameron's a decent card. But I think on the whole, that... Um, that Marlon Saar is very, very good value for money. For like 150,000 coins for a top league on centre-back with a very good nation as well. That's a very, very good SPC. I want to quickly check the featured objective, see if we've got anything for there real quick. Oh, Bakayoko. There you go. Get Saar's SPC done. Strong into Bakayoko. That card is superb. Assist a goal in three rival matches using French players with minimum 80 physical. That's... That's easy. Score a finesse goal in two separate rival matches using a league on player with minimum four-star skills. That's simple enough. Assist two goals in five separate rivals using French players with minimum four-star weak foots. Okay. Score and assist in seven separate rival matches using midfielders with minimum four-star weak foots. That is, I've, th that card is easy to grind for. He's just going to take a little bit of time. But obviously, with everyone in isolation right now, there's no excuses. Everyone should be able to grind towards this card. And I encourage everyone to go for him. You get him, you go and get that Marling Star. There's a great partnership right there. Great CDM, great center back. Happy days. That just kind of makes it even more worthwhile to that Marling Star SPC. And we also got Cordoba as the guy that you can do through, um, through. What's it called? Uh, squad battles as well. And he seems to be a very, very good card as well, actually. That's a, that's a superb card on Cordoba. But that Bakayoko card, I might start grinding for him tonight and maybe try and get a review up for you guys tomorrow or something like that. And there's nothing in Milestones as expected. But on the whole, Marlin Saar, especially if you can link him up with this Bakayoko card, happy days. Very, very good value for money. SPC, in my opinion, for Marlin Saar. But anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you guys later.